Good evening, class. How are you today? Before we start our class today, let us have a prayer. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Again, how are you today? Tonight? Yes, good to hear that class, that you're still blessed and great for tonight. For tonight lesson, we have a new topic. But before that, I will introduce myself. I am Jinky E. Enriquez from BE Ed 4. But before that, I will ask you about what was your last topic last meeting. Don't answer me in chorus. If you have an answer, just raise your right hand. Yes. Yes, very good. Your last topic last meeting is all about biology, the science is life. That is your last topic last meeting. But now, before we go to our new topic and discussion for this evening, I have an activity that I will give it to you. Are you ready to do this activity? Yes, you're ready. So, you are going to do is that you guess the word so that you can complete inside the boxes. Time's up! I think you are finished with our activity for this evening. The correct word inside the boxes in the first box or in the first question, the answer is flowers. And the second box says the correct answer or the correct words inside that boxes is relationships. Who can get the right answer? Yes, very good to those who have got the correct answer. For not bitter next time. But now we are going to have a new lesson for this evening. Our new lesson for this evening is all about the plants and animal cells. But before we go beyond to our discussion this evening about the plants and animal cells, let me introduce to you the objectives. Here is the objectives. At the end of the lesson, the student will be able to explain the basic part of cell, compare and contrast animal and plant cells, demonstrate the importance of symbiotic relationship in our environment through citing a relationship. Then lastly, determine and draw example of a symbiotic relationship. That is our objective for this evening for our new topic for this night. Now, we have an, another activity. This activity is so-called see the similarity as differences. What you're going to do is that get five flowers within your area. After getting it, observe carefully the flowers for a minute, two for each flower. If you have to dissect it, then you can. After, kindly fill in the table. I will show you also in the screen for this instruction. You are ready to this activity? Yes, you're ready. So, you may start your activity now. Yes, I think you are done. You're done with your activity? Yes, you're done. Now, we have an, another activity again. That is so-called, my animal, my say. What you are going to do is that try again to look around in your surroundings. List five animals that they can get along to and list for the food that they eat. After having the list, kindly complete the table below for the activity. Are you ready? Yes. The instruction I will also show to the screen so that you can read again and you can understand easily and review what is the instruction all about. Yes. I think you are all ready. Yes, you are ready. Okay, you may start now. Yes. Yes, I think you are finished. Yes, you are finished. Are all of you are done? Yes, all, all of you are done. Are you enjoying with your activity? Yes, you are enjoying with your activity. Now, I have a question to you in your based in your activity you've done tonight. First question is that, by observing the flowers that you pick, what part of the flowers really caught your attention? Yes. Yes, very good. Thank you for your opinion. Thank you for the nice idea. Second, explain how you think the flowers in your surrounding increases even without planting it. Yes? Yes, thank you very much for your opinion. Thank you for your relatable experience about the plants in our surroundings. Another question. How does the animals in your surrounding get along with each other? Anyone? Yes? Yes, thank you very much. That's great. Your great ideas and great observation. Very good. Now, we are going to our new lesson for today. It's all about plant and animal cell. Before we discuss about plant and animal cell, better to know first is that what is cell, by the way? What is cell, by the way? Yes, cell is 
enclosed by a plasma membrane which form a selective barrier that allows nutrients to enter and waste product to live. That is all about cells. And cells also, the interior of the cell is organized into many special compartments or organelles. It's surrounded by a separate membrane. Mean that, meaning to say that the cell has having an interior of the cell that having an organized and compartments or organelles that surrounded by separate membranes. Now, one major organelle is so-called the nucleus. Nucleus contains the genetic information necessary for cell growth and reproduction. Each cells contain only one nucleus, where other types of organelles are present in multiple copies in the cellular contents or cytoplasm. Organelles include mitochondria, which are responsible for energy transaction, necessary for cell survival. The lysosome, it is also digest and wanted material within the cell. And the endoplastic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus, it is play important roles in the internal organization of the cell by synthesizing selected molecules and then processing, sorting, and directing them to the proper location. That is the organelles included. When we say nucleus, see this picture. In the picture that is all blue color, that is so-called nucleus, meaning to say that see that it is the biggest part of the cells. Cell cytoplasm is home to numerous functional and structural elements. These elements exist in the form of molecules and organelles. Picture them as the tall appliances and inner room of the cell. There are major classes of intracellular organic molecules. First is nucleic acid, are the molecules that contain and help express a cell's genetic code. Nucleic acid has two classes. First is that the eusiribunoclic acid or the NA is the molecule that contains all of the information required to build and maintain the cell. The second is ribunoclic acid or RNA has several roles associated with expression of information stored in the DNA. Protein are a second type of intracellular organic molecules. These substances are made from chain of smaller molecules called amino acid and they serve a variety of function in the cell both catalytic and structural. Carbohydrates, the starches and sugars in cells. Lipids or fat molecules are components of cell membranes, both the plasma membrane and the virus, various intracellular membranes. Now, we go to the plant cells. What is plant cells? Plant cells are the basic unit of life and organism of the kingdom plantae. They are eukaryotic cells, which have a true nucleus along with specialized structures called organelles that carry out different functions. Chloroplasts are organelles that are crucial for plant cells' function. These are the structures that carry out photosynthesis using the energy from the sun to produce glucose. In doing so, the cells use carbon dioxide and they release oxygen. The cell wall and central vacuole work together to give the cell rigidity. Parts and function. Roots are the most important and underground parts of a plant which are collectively called the root system. They are the major part that anchors the plant firmly in the soil. Stem is the part of the plant which is found above the ground. Leaves are the most important part of the plants. They contain chlorophyll that helps the plants to prepare their food using sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water. Three main functions of leaves. First is the photosynthesis. Green leaves prepare food for plants by using water and carbon dioxide in the presence of sunlight. Transpiration, it is the removal of excess of water from plants through tiny pores called stomata. Reproduction, leaves of some plants in reproduction also. For example, leaves bryopylum give rise to a new bryopylum plant. Reproduction sometimes appear in the leaves. As we all know from our elementary years, that reproduction produced by the flowers. But there is sometimes leaves that can produce or have a reproduction system. One of the example of this is the bryopylum plants. That is the one of the example. Now, I will show you the picture of the 
plant cells and then the parts of the flowers and then the parts of the plants under function. First, I will show you the plant cells. This is the plant cells. You can see that there are many cells in a plant cells. Now, we are going to have another parts of a plant. First will be the flowers. This is so-called the most beautiful and colorful part of a plant. They are the reproductive part of a plant. Next will be the petal. It is the colorful part of a flower which attract insects and birds. Next will be the sepals. Sepals are green. Leafy parts present under petals and protect the flower buds from the damage. The stamen, this is the male part of the flower consisting of anther and filament. The pistil, this is the female part of the flowers consisting of stigma style and ovary. Fruits are the main feature of flowering plant. It is the mature ovary that develops after fertilization. Some fruits are developed without fertilization and are known as partinocarpic fruits. And that process is known as partinocarpy. Now, I will show you the picture of a flowers. As you can see, you can see the parts of the flowers which is the petals, the sepals, the stamens, the pestles, the fruits. These are the basic parts of the flowers. Now, we go to animal cells. What is animal cells? Animal cells are generally smaller than plant cells. Another defining characteristic it is a regular shape. A typical cell of animal comprises the following cell organelles. Cell membrane at 10 semi permeable membrane layer of protein and fat surroundings the cell. Its primary role is to protect the cell from its surroundings. Also, it controls the entry and exit of nutrients and other microscopic entities into the cell. Nuclear membrane. It is a double membrane structure that surrounds the nucleus. It is also referred as the nuclear envelope. Nucleus, it is an organelle that contains several other sub-organelles such as nucleolus, nucleosome, and chromatins. It also contains DNA and other genetic materials. Centrosome, it is a small organelle found near to the nucleus which has a thick center with radiating tubules. The centrosomes are where micro tubules are produced. Lysosome or cell vesicles, they are round organelles surrounded by a membrane and comprising digestive enzymes which help in digestion, excretion, and in the cell renewal process. Cytoplasm, a jelly-like material which contains all the cell's organelles enclosed within the cell membrane. The substance found within the cell nucleus contained by the nuclear membrane is called that nucleoplasm. Golgi apparatus, a flat, smoothly layered sac-like organelle which is located near the nucleus and involved in manufacturing, storing, packing, and transporting the particles throughout the cell. Mitochondrion, they are spherical or rod-shaped organelles with a double membrane. They are the powerhouse of a cell as they play an important role in releasing energy. Ribosome, they are small organelles made up of RNA, rich cytoplasmic granules, and they are the size of protein synthesis. In the plastic reticulum or ER, the cellular organelle is composed of a thin, widening network of membrane use, sacs originating from the nucleus. Vagiol, a membrane found organelle present inside a cell involved in maintaining shape and storing water, food wastes, and etc. Nucleopore, they are a tiny holes present in the nuclear membrane with our which are involved in the movement of nucleic acid and proteins within the cell. That is the part of the cells of the animal cells. Now I will show you the picture of the animal cells. This is the animal cells. As you can see, there are part of the animal cells that are also found in the plant cells. Now we are going to go to symbiotic relationship. By the way, what is symbiosis? Yes, symbiosis is a close relationship between two species in which at least one species benefits. There are three kinds of this symbiotic relationship. One of these is the mutualism. It's a symbiotic relationship in which good species benefit. And the second is the commensalism. is a symbiotic relationship in which one species benefits while the other species is not affected. 
Parasitism is a symbiotic relationship in which one species, the parasite, benefits while the other species, the host, is harmed. Now, we are going to have an activity. This is an activity that is individual activity that you can show your creativity in drawing, creativity in designing. The instruction for your activity is that they seek a gumemela flowers and label the parts and put the function of it accordingly. Put this on a long band paper. Second, make your own symbiotic relationship. Put this in a long band paper. Mutualism, commensalism, parasitism. That is your activity. You may start now. All right, I think you're done. You're finished your activity tonight. Now, okay, class. Plant and animal are composed of different kind of blank. Yes, very good. Plant and animal are composed of different kind of cells. Why that animal cell is smaller than plant cells? Yes, yes, very good. Because plant have an organelle called chloroplast, and the second differences is that the structure of the cells itself. What do you call for the relationship between two species in which at least one species benefits? Yes, yes, very good. It is symbiosis. Since symbiosis, it is the relationship between two species in which at least one species benefits. Very good class that you learned to our class this evening. Thank you for your cooperation for our class this evening. God bless everyone.